Secrets 11. I haven't been doing, um, I haven't filmed for a bit now, but here are a couple of uh, the previous paintings from the New Secret series, which I think you'll enjoy. And uh, now we're going on to this exterior cafe one, a larger one, with the sponge rollers and with brushes. Okay, I'm going to start off with my one inch sponge roller. Um, just damp it a bit at first. If you make them too wet, then the paint can trickle all over the place. So when you first use the roller, or if you've washed the roller, make sure you dry it off with a paper towel. Just so you want the surface damp, that's all, so that the paint takes. But too wet, and as I say, it will trickle down the painting. And then, uh, I'll just show you this just the once again. You've seen it in many of my past films, but we come down to my palette of paints. And as you see, I've got quite a variety of colours. I'll take a nice big brush and um, mix up the paint that I want. In this case, I'm going to start with alizarin crimson. And don't add too much water, just enough to get it flowing. And, and of course, when you first use it um, the, with a new roller, it's going to take a bit more paint um, later on. And the trick is to roll the roller through the brush and the paint. Now that's a fairly thin mix and we can build it up just like we can build up a watercolour by putting one layer over another and making the intensity stronger and stronger. And then I can add other colours into it, the different colour hues, the warm and cooler hues of say cadmium red which is warmer or we might go to a bit more um, burnt sienna or something like that um, depending on, on, on the warmth of, of the red as we go along and build up these background uh, shades here of these umbrellas parasols first of all to wherever you see a colour you use it so if I've got that colour here and it's working anywhere else then I will use it elsewhere as well and build up the picture just like a jigsaw that is the point I do call this my jigsaw method uh, because you put one colour in the right shape in the right place relevant one to another. So we take the right colour, we place it wherever it is all over, in the right places, in the right shapes, relevant one to another, so that we know that the colours are correct as we go along over the whole painting all of the time. You don't just finish one spot. So if I start here, I want it fairly heavy, so I'm going to work the roller fairly heavily over this at first. And if I, with acrylics of course they dry so quickly, if I give it a little bit of time in between doing these strokes, um, I can go back over it again and make a darker tone. So at the moment it's very thin. Right down here. I can change tones when I wish. So if I want to say make it a bit redder, deliberately now I can take some red. I'll take some cadmium red in this case. Thin that down a little bit. And you don't have to keep washing the roller, that's the trick. I'll show you the basic technique now of just working up these, these colour shapes. And you see that's a lot, a lot redder. I'm going to put a bit more of this in crimson with a little touch of purple in the middle, maybe some burnt sienna across this. That's more red. And I can use brushwork across this afterwards. At the moment this is just to give an underpainting, if you like. Now I can go across the previous painting, it's just starting to dry a bit. I can still see my drawing underneath, which is very useful to me. And the light areas I'm going to put over, over the top later, so I'll make several layers of this as I build it up. That comes right on through here. It even comes through his face, so I'm going to let that drawing of the face show through. <coughs> right down through here, all up into there, through here. I can still see my drawing underneath, so I'm going to be able to work up with more rollers and brushes after this. It's going to be lighter just across this bit here in a minute. Just put that red behind there. Don't have to be exact with this either, because I can cut into it or I can cut around it when it's dry. Take a wee bit of, just to show you how we can differ this, and take a wee bit of um, burnt sienna now just to show you how the warmer colour can work. And then I'll add some purple into that. This is just to give you an idea of how you can vary these colours as you go along. Now that's a lot browner. And I'm just working it into the semi-damp paint at the top here. Subtle changes that we can make with the sponge roller. You can do it with a brush, but it's very, very different the effects you get with the sponge roller. It's quite fun. 
I'm going to go a little bit thinner across there just to show that bit there. As I say, this bit's going to be a lot redder in a minute. I'm just going to put these this deeper brown red in first before I do the more cadmium red bit of orange, perhaps. I can put details in later. It's amazing how you can use the edge of the roller as well, not just the flat of the roller, to control this. Now you see, I'm, I've been using the flat most, mostly, but if I use the corner of the roller, I'd come up into quite a A more sharper edge, a narrower edge, even even to almost paint thin lines. Down through here, we'll bring the bright red onto there in a minute. And where else is this colour? Is it anywhere else? Well, what? Why you put it on your roller? Like I say, you want to use it. In fact, it's uh, going on with the woman back here. And you can rub with the roller. Look like this as well. Give me a few techniques before I go on to the high speed filming. You can rub with the roller as well as roll with it to get these effects you might want. Go through her face here. I'll put lighter colour on there later. Her hair here is quite uh, warm. Jigsaw method then, my jigsaw method of the right colours and the right shapes in the right places, all relevant one to another, that's important. Use your finger if you need to smudge, no, no problem. Anything that works, you do it. Don't worry about... Uh, there's no rules or regs of this, it's just whatever works, do it. Some things in painting don't work, so fine, but there's always exceptions to the rules for nearly everything. Don't want to leave any white canvas showing in the end, though I do want to use up, uh, make sure that sort of the paint goes well enough into the canvas that we don't get a, a misty effect of the white canvas glowing through. That's not a good idea. You see these lovely effects we can get by variegating the, the paint on the roller. You don't have to even, even roll the paint on evenly onto the roller itself at first. You can get a slight dif difference in um, mixtures on that if you wish. So it doesn't go on just flat. And gradually, I haven't had to wash the brush yet, we can gradually vary this colour. I'm going to put leaves over the top of this afterwards. All I want is an underpainting on here at the moment. Quite thin. See my drawing underneath. You can see where I've gone over an area there, like watercolour, so I get twice the, the thickness of uh, the intensity of the colour. Different directions as well to give the feeling of texture and dimension and space and form. Don't just use it one way all the time. Feel your shapes. As you should with a brush. I mean, if you're painting, you you should be making the marks about the object you're painting. Even with a brush, you feel the surfaces in perspective or around or pinker now, much lighter magenta. There's a base coat here, which I'm going to work over. I'd like to work from my mediums down to my darks and then up through again to my from my mediums to my lights. So I tend to finish with the highlights. Okay, I'm going to come across, uh, I'm going to use a thinner coat, I'm going to paint more water with it, use a thinner coat just to, just to block in this sky up here. I want to go light across that later, so I'll just do a thin coat over there. Just so I can put the lighter colour across it with the roller afterwards. I can see what I'm doing because I can see the drawing through it still. And of course if I go one layer over another it's slightly darker in tone anyway. Right, now I want a much, much richer, more orange red. So I'm not going to bother cleaning the roller. I'll just clean the brush. And I'm going to take some cadmium red which is much warmer than the other reds I've just been using. Mix that up on here with a little touch of 
can be more engine to it just to really get it a bit more lively and roll my roller through it again, through both the brush and the paint. Let's see what we get with that. So we should now get a lovely rich orangey red. Look at that, you see lovely, isn't it? And you see where I'm going over the paint and where I've been before. You get a completely different texture. I can just drag that in, get some more of that. It's a lovely colour. So this is this is cadmium red with a wee touch of a deep cadmium orange. Coming texturally into it and over it and around it. Give me quite a lot of this colour I can see up here. It's not the front. You can see it now working against the colour hues of the burnt sienna and the a little crimson from earlier and the deep cadmium red going towards um, magenta it, it, it links together, it starts to hold together more as one colour comes into and over another here I don't want it too thin, I have to get some heavier paint on I do like the different textures of paint I can get with the roller and the brushes as well so I may well slab in with some flat brushes here later too to really get the feeling of surface and dimension and the, the more abstract or contemporary feel of the, of the paints. I'm not just doing a copy of this by any means, it's completely different to the actual photograph. I'm taking it one stage further all of the time. And I shall put slabs of paint over that more later. It's just just to get the undercoating and this effect of light that we've got here. The flowers going on behind there that are red. I'm saying that, but whatever it is, whilst we're doing this, we must um, put the colours wherever they are at this stage. The darker and lighter shades. I'm going to go back to my this one crimson in just a second and put some of that back into here before we start on the greens and all the other colours that are so beautifully orchestrated down here. So uh, back to the alizarin. And a wee touch of purple now. A wee touch of light purple. Which really makes those reds stand out. And as I say, I'm going to slab on, definitely going to slab on some um, heavier paint of these colours afterwards over these textures to really enjoy the surface texture of the brushwork. How many different colours and variations happening here? That, and this is, uh, you can see, I'm going over a lot of the white. But I've got the lines underneath so I know where I am, I hope I do. I can come back with the lighter colours and the deeper colours afterwards. There's so many different tones to use with the rollers here. A very light purple I'm using, just to get the base coats here. Watch where it comes, I say if it comes into another colour, it's all going to hold things together. It gives a unity. If one colour comes over and into another, but do remove the white of the canvas, don't let that white, you could always do a, a coloured ground of course if it came to it, but don't let the white misty canvas come through as a texture, it's not, not a good thing. I'm adding a little bit of a very pale cerulean to it now just to get a slightly lighter purple just here. The lights have got to go over this as well to bring these surface shapes out. Late up. A lot more greens to go in here from the trees in the background. Got palm trees all the way along here. It's a bit like um, the Isle of Porcoral in uh, Provence that I was doing. You see the lovely effects I can get now by not beating the roller too even when I put the paint on. I deliberately want to get a 
feeling of some mottled background as the greens are going to come across in a minute. And we can get rid of these last bits of these last vestiges of, of white soon. Let's just put that colour in there, even though it isn't going to be quite the right one yet, just just to cover it. Now we can start to look at the other colours that are going on. And I'm going to uh, need to add a little bit of you can see with the trees, I'm going to add a little bit of green to it. Same colour. Just going to take a little bit of um, an emerald green. Run the roller through that without cleaning the roller. Let's just test it first, just that's not right. Right up through there. Just to give a hint of it at the moment, just to get these background misty effects of light if I want. Very fluid way to work. In fact, although it's got a lot of fluid on the roller, it's just that way we can pull across things and link them together that's so lovely. You can see where the snowy effects of cams that I haven't quite covered enough are now starting to show through and why I was saying do make sure you cover the canvas because of that, otherwise it will make a mess later, yes. I have to take my own advice at times, I've been a little bit thin in places here and the canvas is showing through a bit, which I do not want that white canvas showing through that misty effect, I really don't. Here for instance it's doing it. I can always use a thin wash or acrylic to deal with that. And now, as I'm saying, we need more purple, isn't it? A bit more warmth. I'm going to take a bit more um, alizarin and a bit more of the purple. Not too dark a mix yet. It's a, a mid purple that I've used here. That's so it's a bit warmer still. More, a little more brown, I think. A little more um, burnt sienna into that. A little warmer, that's better. Down into this lovely bit here, which is going to have lights put in between it very shortly. I'll have to decide whether I'm going to use the brush or whether I'm going to use the roller. Oh, you, the forms are just starting to show, aren't they? We can just begin to see what's happening under here. Prussian blue and a little bit of alizarin. Give me a lovely deep rich sort of bluey purple. Which I'm going to start using on her hair here. And my finger as well because it's a little bit thin the paint just there. And I don't want to have any of that canvas showing. And the finger gives a nice texturing to work her hair up there. A little touch, smidgens of black into it, just a token of diffraction. So we can use the edge of the roller just to indicate surfaces and roundness of form. Most of this I need to do with the brush really, but we'll just try as much as good as far as we can with the, with the sponge rollers always. When you've got a tool in your hand, obviously use it economics and uh, the more I do hopefully the more you see the forms gradually appearing. We've got the overall effect of the light, the middle tones of the light coming through now. Okay, that's it. Wherever the colour is now let's look and Make sure we get it in. So we've gone down towards our darker tones. We've got a little bit darker yet. But not too much more. I think I want to... I need to um, put the blues a bit more now. Got some lovely purple blues and greys going on over here. Let's have a look at them. Some of them aren't easy to mix. I'm trying some... Very, very light. Um, let's some 
turquoise with a little bit of blue, grey, and magenta I've got here to just try and find these this beautiful glow of colour going on around here. Not easy to find it. Probably cool, cool colours happening behind here that I'm going to really bring out much more when I go towards the light. And how much more I can do with the roller and uh, I need to go into the brushes. A bit more green happening. Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be good fun coming up with the brushes isn't it? You can see that. Now we're really starting to get there I think. It's almost brush time. Just want, to do a few, just want to do a few of the really darks and then go back up to some of my lights with the sponge roll which I haven't quite done yet. And we'll be able to get on with the brushes. It's like I can see wood for trees now and where things are. What I've got to decide now is do I want to do any more with the sponge roller or go straight on with the brushes? But I think actually I might go straight on with the brushes now because I've got my undercoats and various textures. Let's slap in some of these lovely lights, shall we? So I'm going to take a flat brush. What's that one about? Half inch. Let's take some pure white and come straight into here. I love using white this way, pure white. We can't go whiter than white, but at this stage, usually I leave pure black or pure white until the very end, but it's quite fun actually to actually build a painting up this early with, with the lights and the darks. And I've gone to my darker colours already, as you've seen. I'm doing now is just uh, going immediately right up to my lightest. You can cut around these forms. We don't have to completely paint out the background. If we don't want to, we can just leave that just glowing through in places. And I can slap more paint on whenever I like. I'll just build this up first. A nice big slabs of strokes of paint, nice painterly marks. Because we're going to have some lovely pink coming in there in a minute, some flash pink I'm going to use. Right up to the other end of our tones, not our hues, our tones. With this, we'll just find these lovely lights a moment. And already you can see this lovely shape. This is why I chose this, put these, this composition together. It's a composition I've made up, it isn't an actual cafe. It's one that I've uh, been a composite of, made up. Highlights of white in first, and then let's see if we can start to see wood for trees. We can already you can see the sunlight in this now. Now it's a lovely pink. I don't know whether I want to make it too bright. Let's just have a look at this. See what this does. If you're going to be light enough, actually. It goes to a blue pink as well anyway, this. So blue grey pink. Bring some of that into there. Painting with light, painting with highlights is a lovely thing to do. So it's just lovely textures of being able to use the sponge rollers earlier and now being able to like some warm pink here as well, an almost fluorescent pink that's quite fun. 
you can use in places to really enhance these. I'm talking of which I can now come back with and start to look at these delicious stripes and things on her jersey here. So I'm just using a flat brush, using the end of the flat brush, so it's so versatile. And let's see about any slabs of paint we can we might be using up into here to really bring this out. Really nice big thick slabs of fresh paint. Love it, love it. Getting this paint on like this is a gorgeous way to work. He's using pure crimson now. I'm going to make the cadmium red to a much brighter, warmer, more vibrant red. We lose all the marks underneath now because I don't need them now, I can see what I'm doing. So now it's just really the pleasure of gradually working up and building up these beautiful, beautiful colours. Prussian blues and deep sap greens and so on. And so I'm trying to stay with the, the same flat brush most of the time just to I think we'll go a little bit longer than we'll call it a day for today. We've had a whole day at this just about, so we've spent a fair amount of time on it. much more tonight I don't think. Just uh, finding these last colours for the evening. A little bit of um, turquoise going on down him here. We're almost there for this evening.
I think that'll do for today. The light's going now and I'm feeling a bit tired, so I will call that a day for the moment. Okay, well now we have day two of this. Carry on with my flat brush and uh, got a lot of areas to work up yet, like the leaves and things coming through here and uh, some of the details around the hole. Let's start with those those leaves and uh, I was talking about a flat brush and in fact I'm going to go down to a, a round for the minute and just see if I can start on these leaves with a round. Because the round, I mean, it's horses for courses. If we've got a brush that already is the shape of a flower petal, and we're painting a flower, then that's ideal, isn't it? If not, then uh, it's like trying to paint a, a round hole with a square brush or a square hole with a round brush. You're better off with a square brush for a, so a window, four window panes in, which is square, than trying to paint it with a round brush. Simple as that. No other way I can think of doing it as easily. Even with a, a stipple brush I'd have a job to get these, this explosion of leaves coming through here. I've already used the roller to get the effect of the background leaves, so... I'm going to go lighter with them yet as well. Lighter later, as I sometimes say. <coughs> I've got more yellowy green leaves to put on. I've got a whole series of different uh, hued leaves to put on, not just this one colour. I've got to really look at how this works. Larger ones in the foreground. And sometimes it takes more than one coat because the, um, the paint, even though it's a heavy body, will sink a bit. But it's warm against cool, rough against smooth, and light against dark as I'm gradually doing this. See where else the colour is while it's on your brush, use it wherever it, it is and you haven't done so. And I'm using the paint a lot thinner now, you might notice. I'm using a, a glaze of it rather than uh, impasto now up here. Just to work up over the different thicknesses, consistencies of the paint. Get the feel of this. So I'm going to come back in with some more yellow, gold and um, greens as well into this to really try and find these different hues of sunlight coming down through and into this, uh, into these lovely palms behind here. Dropping back, if I start to add some much more yellowy, bright yellow green here now to really start to come and get these it's the sunlight happening on tops of some of these leaves here. You could make this colour with lemon yellow and um, some cerulean or a bit of uh, cerulean, a bit of turquoise if you wanted to. It's a much warmer, more yellow, brighter, more acidic green. Keep working on and working on these little bits of the light shining through until we get them bright enough. Watch out for reflected light on things like that as well that I just touched there on the side of his face. We've got reflected light going on down into here as well as these. So these colours will be reflecting all over and through. Reflected greens that are coming right through here. <clears throat> it gives the whole thing much more depth. Really, really got to look for colours all the time here. Warm against cool, light against dark, rough against smooth, all the time here we're Even a little area there where her ear 
becomes as important. So they're gorgeous colours. But we must keep working the lights against darks, warms against cools, roughs against smooths here, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Up here we've got some darker leaves coming against the sky. We put those lighter green leaves in earlier, but we haven't got the then we've got some very, very, very light green leaves going on, so very very light um, cobalt and white and a little bit of lemon yellow just to pick up on these beautiful little leaves. They're reflecting the sky right down through here. Amongst the pinks here to make the pinks the warm seem warmer because by putting the opposites of the complementary colours together, we can get some beautiful vibrancy going on here. You see how those opposites, warms and cools, work well together now to give the shimmering effect of light. I may well play some other lighter colours here later as well. I just need to get all these little details and reflections. Just to give you an impression of the texture. We're not copying it, remember, we're never copying, we're just using and giving an impression of things that are here. I can just keep building up these details bit by bit. These little bits of light against dark and warm against cool now that are going to bring out these shapes and textures. Could be using a larger brush, but I just like to flick in some of these details with a round brush. Gradually finding these strange and weird colours that are in places here. Greeny browns and all sorts of strange things going on. And, uh, in the shadows. There's a lot happening in a painting like this that you can just skirt over and give an impression of and you can gradually work up as far as you feel it's necessary. But I should be using a flatter brush now at times to block this rather than have too many light strokes. Just warm up some of these little bits of light. It's always uh, often a question I'm asked is um, when is it finished? When do you know it's finished? And it's just purely an intuitive thing. I mean, you might think it's finished and then go away and come back later and decide that there are bits that are not quite finished. And you tend to know when a painting has reached its zenith. It's And to feel it intuitively. Over here to the darks that are against the lights here. That's one colour. I completely change the painting. How I'm putting in these bits of 
a lesser and crimson now and a bit of magenta up here can totally alter the warms against the cools and therefore the values. Using a, a dark magenta now as a cool a foil against some of these warmer colours to just try and pull out the warms against cools a bit more again. And lighter still with the magenta into here. Keep working at it until we really feel we've achieved the colours we're after. So we're nearly there now, it's just uh, going to go to these last colours I think. So we're just going to finish off now, I think. A few dark lines here. And there we have the reflective reds going on. too much that's for sure but we do have to just try and make them appear to be perhaps a bit more than that's what we can do. I'm trying to always do the maximum with the minimum so uh, it's a matter of trying to get the feeling of this cup with as few marks as possible Without it looking too crude, and it does at the moment. I need to bring it down a bit, I think. Just fiddle around a little bit, they don't want to fiddle around too much, that's for sure. This is a bit of touching up here and there that requires a little bit of work, I think. I think we've just about gone as far as I want to go with this one. There we go. Now where to sign it? I don't actually think that signing it this side is such a good idea. I might well sign it the other side. Over here. I'm probably in a darker colour. Hard to say because the light would, unlike the tincture, would bring it out. But I think we'll go for a darker first of all. Right, there we are, sequence 11. Um, getting rid of the crowds. We're allowed to move around again as uh, Covid ends, well, is in control at least, and we seem to be getting back towards a normal life. What we have to do now is see what Russia does, because that's going to affect things greatly, one thing after another. Sheer madness, but that's out of our control.